Because the Lassad assures Mr. Al Ibrahimi of Syria's keenness to advance any efforts in the interests of the Syrian people and the sovereignty of their homeland. And the Russian foreign minister says that the future of Syria is in the hands of its people and not in the hands of foreign powers. And a report from Damascus about St. Hanania's church and the story of the saint. This is news in English. President Bashar al-Assad received the UN envoy to Syria, al-Akhdar al-Ibrahimi, and the accompanying delegation this morning. They held cordial talks in which President Assad stressed Syria's keenness to advance any efforts leading to preserving the interests of Syria and its sovereignty. President Assad explained to the UN envoy the latest developments in Syria. On his part, al-Ibrahimi showed President Assad the results of communication and discussions he made lately to solve the Syrian crisis. The talks dealt with the cooperation between the Syrian government and the UN envoy, during which President Assad stressed the Syrian government's keenness to ensure the success of any efforts in the interest of the Syrian people that save the country's sovereignty and independence. In a statement to journalists after the meeting with President Assad, al-Brahimi said, the talks dealt with the problems from which Syria is suffering as we exchange opinions concerning the steps that should be taken. Al Ibrahimi said that he briefed President al Assad about the meetings he had with different officials from inside and outside the area, showing the steps he sees as possible to help the Syrian people overcome the crisis. Al Ibrahimi stressed that the rumors that have been said about the delay of President Assad's to accept to meet with him during the past visits, and he asked the Russians to mediate for him to meet the president or he will resign were completely untrue. al Ibrahimi described the situation in Syria as serious, expressing his hope that all sides tend to the solution that the Syrian people look for. The Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov asserted that those who criticized the UN Security Council claiming its inability to deal with the crisis in Syria originally wanted to issue a resolution based on Chapter 7 in order to impose more sanctions and use force against Syria. In an interview with the TV channel Russia Today, the, he asserted that both Russia and China rejected such a trend, which would be catastrophic and leading to dangerous results. Mr. Lavrov pointed out that some parties were trying to internationalize and expand violence beyond the Syrian borders. The armed opposition was provoking the Syrian government and trying to turn the conflict into a dangerous sectarian crisis. He warned against spreading chaos in Syria because it would spill into the whole region. He asserted that Russia's priority is to stop violence and bloodshed. Those who would like to save Syria should join us in calling for an end for the fighting and start an unconditional dialogue, leaving the destiny of Syria in the hands of its people away from any foreign powers. He pointed out that Russia supported the Geneva communique, which would create proper conditions for enabling the Syrian parties to negotiate the future of their country without any foreign intervention and after stopping violence. He asserted that the West did not respect the Geneva Agreement. In our local news, a terrorist group attacked the town of Hilfaya in Hama countryside and massacred a number of women and children. The terrorists photographed the massacre in order to attribute it to the Syrian army. The people of Hilfaya said the terrorists also attacked public and government buildings, including the dispensary and the municipality building. The people appealed to the armed forces. A unit was sent to repulse these crimes. Several terrorists were killed and wounded. In Daraya and Damascus countryside, a Syrian Arab army unit clashed with terrorists and killed several of them, including Khalid Ahirkil, Talal Abu Sara, Abdul Imam Muhammad Kokash, Omar Talib, and Zuhair Uthman. A unit of our armed forces chased other terrorist groups in Aqraba and Beit Saham. They killed a number of them, including one of their leaders called Sami Shamishmi. In Duma and Halasta fields, another unit of our armed forces killed several terrorists and destroyed their equipment. 
In Aleppo and its countryside, a Syrian army unit attacked the terrorists in the area of Rasm al-Aboud and destroyed six cars carrying terrorists and large amounts of ammunition. The hideouts of terrorists in several other villages were disarmed and destroyed. The city of Aleppo units of our armed forces attacked terrorist hideouts in several quarters and killed and wounded several of them, destroying their equipment. Two terrorist groups fought while dividing stolen goods, killing the terrorist Khaled also also known as Siraj, who led a terrorist group calling itself Bani Zaid. Every day a videotape shows terrorists coming to Syria from the end of the world. The latest video showed extremists coming from Sweden and calling for jihad in Syria. They follow the fatwas of petrol doors sheikhs, agents of the U.S. and Israel. The mercenaries from Sweden called upon other Muslims in Scandinavia to join them in the so-called jihad. These mercenaries, however, weren't told that their destiny in Syria would be darker than the Black Knight. They would never meet mates in heaven, but they would be crushed on this noble land. <laughs> The suspicious clerics gave them fatwas to plunder the houses of the Syrian people. They are supported by some Gulf regimes like Qatar and Saudi Arabia, which lack any democratic institution. Saudi Arabia is the only place in the world which prevents women from driving cars. Hanania Church is a religious and historical place in the old city of Damascus. It is the house of Apostle Hananias, who baptized St. Paul in Damascus at the early stages of Christianity. Hanania is the first bishop of Damascus, and he is a biblical figure of the apostolic age. He was the priest who baptized St. Paul in the church that carried his name, Hanania Church. After the resurrection of Jesus Christ, priest Hanania came to Damascus, and he was the first Christian bishop in Damascus. He was worried about the Christians from the persecution of Saul, who was converted later into Christianity after receiving a vision of the Lord. Thus, Bishop Hanania baptized Saul, who was called Saint Paul. Hanania Church is located at the east side of Old Damascus. It was known throughout the ages as the Holy Cross Church at the 5th century. At present, the house of Hanania is a crypt with two rooms, one of which is a chapel reached by means of basaltic steps. The place is a destination for visitors from different parts of the world who come to pray, lit a candle, and worship at the house of martyr Saint Hanania. And from the church we end our news for today. You can look up more details on our website, www.serialonline.sy. Stay with us.